Welcome to Andrews Air Force Base. Give Science a hand is going to go up, up, and away in just a couple minutes. Watson's inside this plane here looking for his air sick bag and his parachute. We're going to see him in just a couple seconds. But if you've ever wondered how an airplane actually gets off the ground, that big heavy thing, how do you beat gravity and get up there and fly, today we're going to tell you. And to help us out, we've got our own top gun right here. This is Lieutenant Zeke Burkowski, and he's going to take us on a tour all over the Washington area. We're going to show you Ocean City. We're going to show you the capital from the air. Zeke, nice to have you on the show. Thank you very much, Dave. Glad to be here. All right, now for the kids out there who are wondering, now how does a plane work? We're going to give them a primer today. All right. What are the basic parts of an airplane? Basic parts you need are the wings, the ailerons, elevator, rudder, and of course the engines. Okay. Now you got what's the fuselage? Is that where the people sit? Fuselage is where the people sit, the uh, wings, elevators, ailerons, everything is attached to, and you also carry gas on it sometimes. Gasoline, can you use unleaded or uh, does it make any difference? Believe it or not, you can, but we prefer not to. <laughs> okay. Now, what right in back of us here is, of course, the wing. Now, can you tell the students what these parts are? Like when you go up in a commercial aircraft, you look out the window, you're heading to see your grandmother in California, <laughs> and you see these things going up and down and in and out. What are they? Those are flaps and slats, and those help the airplane lift. They create more lift just by changing the camber of the wing or how much the wing is rounded on the underside. The more rounded it is, to a certain extent, the more lift you'll be able to produce in a shorter amount of airspeed. I see. In fact, if there's something you'd like to try at home, take a piece of paper like I've got here. It's too windy for me to try it. Take the piece of paper and hold it and blow over the top of it. If you blow over the top of the paper, it won't go down. It'll actually go up. Same thing the way an airline wing works. Because the wind blows over the top faster than over the bottom, there's less pressure on top and it gives the plane lift. Real simple physics procedure. So we've got the flaps here. Are these the flaps? These are the flaps right these are here. The flaps. And what are these right here behind me? These are the ailerons. Now, Each air side of the airplane has one. Okay. And out here at the end, these little things sticking out looks like they're leftovers. You're supposed <laughs> to snap those off. They must have a purpose. Those are our static wings. Um, what they do is they discharge static electricity is built up on the airplane. Much like if you, uh, in your house, you're running along the carpet and you pick up the static electricity and try and shock your mother or your brother. But kids don't do that, do they? <laughs> we know they do. So they take care of that static Roger, electricity. instead of having somebody touch something in order to get rid of the electricity, the airplane discharges it through those little wicks right there. Gotcha. Now, if we could take the wing apart, if we could cut it in half, what would we see inside? What's inside the wing? Is it hollow? Yes, it is. It's hollow inside the wing, and what we keep in there, instead of just wasting the area, we put the fuel that we use for the aircraft inside this wing. Oh, so the fuel was inside here? Yes. All right. Now, everybody knows about the engines in the car. There have to be engines on this plane. Let's go have a look at those. All right. Now that we know how the wings are put together, we know something about rudders and ailerons. We're here at the front of the aircraft and we're going to look at the propeller. And by the way, Zeke, we didn't tell the students what kind of plane this was. Our, it's, not a, it's not a jumbo jet. No, sir. Our airplane is a military C-12F. In uh, the civilian world, it's known as a King Air 200. Most corporations use them to fly their presidents and vice presidents around to meetings. And it's a pretty sleek looking plane. In fact, all planes are sleek. Why is it that the nose is so streamlined and the wings as well. What's the purpose of that, Zeke? It's a twofold purpose. You want the uh, airplane to, to glide through the air as smooth as it can with as little uh, ripple effect on the engines or on the aircraft itself. Also, it's uh, more fuel efficient. If the airplane slides through the air fi or faster and finer, you use less gas to propel, to propel it that way. Okay, that makes sense. And of course, we've been talking about forces on the program here. We mentioned at the beginning that there is lift and there's thrust, and we're beating gravity, but we also have to fight against drag, which makes it tough for the plane to go through the air. So smooth it down, it goes through easier, like a knife through butter. Now, what we have behind us here looks a little bit like what you see on a family car. Now, am I wrong, Zeke? Or, no, you're uh, absolutely right. <laughs> is this an exhaust pipe? As, as you say, it is an exhaust pipe. As we start out, the air that comes in the bottom here from the propellers and the outside air, goes in and it's used to mix with the fuel and burn and, and produce a thrust for the engine. Also, 75% of this air is used to cool the engine, much like the radiator on your car. That's a good example. Goes back here, burns, produces the thrust, the thrust has to go somewhere, the exhaust is rerouted, comes up here, and out the exhaust pipe of the airplane, if you want to call it that. Okay, but well, that's a lot like a family car then, and that's yes, it is. Now, right behind me here, I'm glad I'm not standing where you are, uh, these propeller blades, this is not a jet engine. What would you call this kind of plane? This is a turboprop airplane. Turboprop. 
All right, and I see some danger signs there. You wouldn't want to stand in this place if you were in our position, but we know no one's going to turn these engines on, right? That's Jake? right. That's right. right. <laughs> okay, we've got his assurance. We've got one more place to look at on the plane. We're going to go back to the tail and look at the elevators. I didn't know they had elevators on airplanes. <laughs> I don't know about escalators. We're going to look at the rudder, and then we're going to go inside and find out where we're going today. Stay tuned. Here we are at the back of the plane, the, the Wright brothers for the 1980s. <laughs> <laughs> Zeke and Mr. Z here. Now, we said we were going to come back and look at the rudders and the elevators. Now, where are the elevators on an airplane, Zeke? Well, the elevator is not like what you would think in a conventional place. The elevator is a wing on the top of the airplane that causes the airplane to go up and down. Our pitch changes with our elevator. Okay. Now, what about the rudder? The rudder here is uh, one of the axes on which our airplane turns up, down, left, right, and then we can swivel it around a pivot point. And that's what our rudder does here. Mm -hmm. And if we want the airplane to turn left or right, this is what moves. Okay, and for those of you that ever made paper airplanes in school when you shouldn't have or even when you should have, <laughs> rudders are real important to control of the aircraft. So we have elevators up top and the rudder. Uh, what about this? Is this another device for controlling static electricity here? Yes, we have them along the wings, along the rudder, along the tail, and on the very top of the aircraft to help discharge electricity. It builds up all over the aircraft. Now, we see some wires up there on the plane, Zeke. We haven't talked to the students about radar or communication. Is that involved in communicating with the ground? Yes, it is. On our airplane, you're in constant communications with people on the ground, always telling you where they're at, they're telling you where you should be going, telling you where other aircraft are in relationship to yourself. And those two wires up there are part of our uh, radio equipment, along with the antenna right here underneath the MAC sticker. Mm -hmm. And we have 14 other antennas on this aircraft, all of them involving for communications, navigations, and radar. Okay, well, I have a lot of confidence in this pilot. I think you do as well. We're about to go take our trip. You now have a primer on flight. If you have any fear of flying, I think it'll be taken away after our flight today. The plane is fairly simple. Zeke made it sound complicated, but he's a professional. He's going to take us up now into the control panel, show us how everything works inside. But before we do that, let's go have a look at the map and find out where we're going. Okay, Zeke, let's All pack right, our let's bags. Do it. Now that we know how our bird works, we know about wings and ailerons and rudders and flaps, we're about to get on board and it's time to find out where we're headed today. Uh, where's the Yellow Brick Road going to take us, Zeke? Yellow Brick Road today, we're going to head up towards Annapolis, fly over the Bay Bridge. Gee. We'll head off eastward. Yeah. We'll go towards uh, Dover, Delaware and Atlantic City. Uh -huh. uh, once there, we'll go down the coast towards Norfolk, Virginia. Before we get that close, we'll come on back inland and we'll fly back towards Andrews and... After flying over Ocean City, we'll head back towards Upper Marlboro, Bowie, and uh, Landover. Okay, that sounds like quite a trip. How long is it going to take us? It's just around an hour. Around an hour. Watch, did you hear that? Yeah, it's just like going around the Bellway once, you yeah. know? <laughs> yeah. Now, should we bring our suntan lotion along and our sunglasses? Are we going to stop at the beach? No, I wish we could, but uh, not going to be able to stop at the beach today. Oh. And when you see that green skin tan, now you don't want to see that, Zeke. <laughs> Tell me on this member, yeah. this doesn't look anything like a roadmap students would be used to. Uh, can you explain how a pilot makes sense of all this? Uh, well, we go to class to learn all these things, but this map is basically just like you would see on a car map, except our roads are in the air and not on the ground. We fly along airways, which are navigated by radio signals, and we fly between points and lines that are drawn out for us, much like a, a road is paved, except ours is done with electromagnetic impulses. Okay. And you mentioned something about you learned this in school. Uh, before we get on board, if there are students out there thinking about being pilots like you, what would you advise them? What are some good subjects to take in school? Uh, how did you prepare for your career? Uh, I've always been attracted to airplanes. My father was in the military. But uh, what you need to do is start off early with good grades. You can't wait till the last minute to start working on those. Uh, have good grades from the very beginning. Be athletic and outgoing in uh, student government. Uh, uh, leadership courses you might have in there, uh, sports teams, and then once you get to college, if you have a private license, that's great. If not, you might want to work on one. It's not prerequisite. Uh, apply to your ROTC, or if you want to, you can go to the Air Force Academy, or even once you have a degree, you can apply to OTS, Officer Training School. You know, the kind of person you're describing, Zeke, is a lot like Watson here. Sure is. Now, yeah. uh, what do you think about his haircut? Is that going to make it here in the Air Force? No, Watson will have to get it trimmed. <laughs> trimmed? <laughs> <laughs> All right, now that we know our itinerary, let's climb on board and get ready for this uh, flight. You ready? ready? Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Well, geez, Zeke, uh, Mr. Z had to go get his Dramameter or something. I'm not sure what exactly what it was, but <laughs> gee, wh where are we? What is this place here? This is the weather counter where all pilots come and we find out where the weather is 
where we're going to have to fly around it if we need to, what uh -huh. it's like where we go, and what it's like where we're taking off from. Oh, gee. Well, that's, a, that's a neat looking map you got here on the TV. Yeah, this shows us Virginia, Maryland, southern New Jersey, and parts of Pennsylvania. Uh huh. The places we're going to be flying to today. Yeah, what are those little flashing things on there? Well, flashing things are places where the weather is starting to, to grow, like thunderstorms are starting to grow or yep. rain showers have already developed. Oh. As you can see, down here towards Norfolk, Virginia, yeah. there's a little one growing right off the coast there. Yeah. So we won't fly to there today. Oh, good. But uh, the rest of the places we're going to are just fine. Clear in a million. Yeah. Well, I've noticed that it's sort of shaped like the state of Maryland and surrounding areas, but what are all these little three-letter things on there? Three little thing, three letter things are where the airports are that we're going to be going. For example, uh, BWI uh -huh. is Baltimore Washington International. Uh, ACY is Atlantic City. We'll be going there today. Really? RIC is Richmond. Yeah. And back home is DCA is uh, Washington National. Oh gee, well gee, I guess we're about ready to go then. Let's go. All right. What's in your dress for the park? Do you think you could fly this thing? Gee, I, I like to think so. <laughs> well, before we give you your wings, let's find out from Colonel Pretty and Lieutenant Zeke how this thing works. Okay. Colonel, if Watson here had to fly this plane in a pinch, uh, what are some of the key controls he'd have to know about? Now, that looks like a television screen there. We know it's not. What's that for? Well, uh, actually, that's a weather radar. And Watson, you really wouldn't need that. Not unless you were going to get into some weather. And on a day like today, we wouldn't be in any weather. Oh, what nice to know, you know? What you really need to fly the airplane is first, this is called a yoke, and it's really just like a steering wheel on a car. If you turn left, the airplane goes left. If you turn right, the airplane goes right. In order to make the airplane go fast enough to get airborne and to make those turns, then you just push forward on these throttles, as we call them here. Some airplanes call them power levers, but what that basically does it causes the engine to uh, run faster, put out more power, and get us airborne. Once you're fa going fast enough to get airborne, you just pull back on this yoke. Looks like a steering wheel. You pull back on it, and the nose of the airplane comes up, and you're airborne. After you've done that, you reach down, pull this little lever up, and that'll bring the landing gear up. Now, Colonel, what about all the dials we're looking at there? Uh, they all look like clocks to Watson and me. Do you have a, an odometer and a speedometer like you would on a car? Uh, yes, you do. It's, uh, it's easier to see, I think, on the co-pilot side. That's the speed indicator. We read speed not in miles per hour, but in knots. That's nautical miles per hour. The other thing up here that's uh, important to you is this row of instruments here. Those instruments tell us how the engine is doing and how much fuel we're burning at any one time. Another important instrument for navigation is this one over here that looks like the world. The sky is blue, the earth is brown. Once you're in the air, it's important to keep the sky up, of course. Additionally, we have a compass that tells us which direction we're heading, and that's right below the uh, attitude indicator which as I said looks like the sky. Those are really all the instruments you need to fly the airplane. One more question Colonel, you said it's an attitude indicator. Do you also have an altitude indicator so we know how high we are? Yes, of course we do. The uh, altitude indicator is right here. Because we have the engine turned off right now it says off. But this was t would tell us how high we are right here. All right, thank you, Colonel Watson. You think you can handle all that? Gee, I don't think so. Yeah, I think I'm going to fly with the Colonel before I fly with you. Uh, you you'll get your wings someday, but not quite yet. You ready to take your flight? Yep. Can I keep okay. hat? You can keep your hat. You can strap yourself in because we're about to take off. Oh, good. Okay, let's, let's get going. Yeah.
the Howard B. Owen Science Center. Some folks just can't wait to get in. But make no bones about it, the science practice here is not for the faint-hearted. A trip to Owens is to know what the shadow knows. It's the chance to use a microscope and get up close and personal. To pick through history. To meet creatures who speak with forked tongues. 80,000 students take off on science each year at Owens. Isn't it time that you visit it too? Better hurry though, there's already a crowd and they're all buzzing about the Howard Owen Science Center. Come see for yourself. Well, we're back on solid ground now. Yep, yep, sure are. Uh, Watson, did you enjoy the flight? Yeah, that was a blast. A yeah. Bl look at this. Yeah, are you nice? are you supposed to be the red baron? Well, I'm the white baron. Can you see my scarf? Maybe the green yeah. baron here. Here's well, your... a little green, yeah. <laughs> Watson has really taken to the airways uh -huh. here. See, we've got an amateur pilot here. And, of course, now you know more about flight. And the next time you climb aboard a commercial airplane and you go out and you fly to see your relatives or go on vacation, uh -huh. you'll know more about how that thing takes off and what keeps it up there and how it comes back down. Right, yep, Watson? Yep, yep, yep. Ooh, yeah. I love that. Yeah. You look like you're ready for some skydiving. Yep. You want to try that a little bit later? Yeah, well, yeah we'll do that later, <laughs> okay. yeah. If you're not lucky enough to have the Air Force take you up as they did us. And if you don't have a C-12 in your backyard, you can have the next best thing. Let's put together a couple models here to show you how flight takes place. All oh, right, Watson? Yeah, okay. In fact, we have a couple models here, courtesy Gee, of the students at Kettering Elementary oh, School. Oh, I've been there before. Now, the students at Kettering are great students, and they made these paper airplanes for a particular assignment, not while they were supposed to be doing something else. Look at these designs, Watson. They're, Every single one they're different. is different. Yeah. Boy, this looks like the Concorde. Uh -huh. Look at the sleek, the colors they have. Hey, this is a different kind. Look at how the wings sweep up at the side. Ooh, that looks neat, Mr. Z. All right, and this one, this is a stubby little model. Huh. U.S. of A with the stars on the wings. Nice stars. Now, to find out if these planes can actually fly, you can set up a wind tunnel and test the aerodynamics of these planes. Big huh. word for you. Now, how do you do that? First of all, let's recap what Zeke told us out there on the airfield. Now, I've put together a wooden airplane here. This is a balsa wood model. Uh -huh. Costs about 50 cents. They're very cheap. Uh, Watson, what did we call the place where we sat when we were up above the eastern shore? Seats. Those were the seats. Yeah. Listen to him. The technical term was the fuselage. Fuselage. The fuselage. Yeah, I knew that, Mr. Z. All right. I was just teasing you. You do that a lot, don't you? Uh-huh. All right, Red Baron here. Yeah. Can you help us out? These two wings. Now, there's something here that helps control the, the flight as we take off and come in. Those were called the ailerons. Remember uh -huh, those? Right. Uh -huh. There were stabilizers at the end. Right. At the back of the plane, we have the... What's that's, this, Watson? Oh, that's the rudder. That's the rudder. Uh -huh. And then we have the... Oh, those are... Uh, 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 oh, they have them in buildings, don't they? Yes, they do. Those are elevators. Those are elevators. Yeah. And this provides some stability. Stabilizes the flight so it stays nice and on course like you want it to. Uh -huh. Now, if you remember those parts, one more thing you should know. We talked about at the airfield, if you blow on a piece of paper, it'll go up instead of down. Yep. Well, that's because we know that the air flows over the wing faster than it goes underneath. That provides, what that's, what's that force, Watson, that lift. brings it up? It's lift. lift. In fact, if you have a Frisbee, this is one of my favorite toys, Watson's too. Yep. It has a shape like an airplane wing, and it's called an airfoil. Now, that's nothing like aluminum foil, as Watson was saying earlier. Airfoil refers to a shape, and again, the reason why a Frisbee flies is because the air goes faster over the top than underneath, and it creates lift. lift. Now, in order to get this thing to move forward, there's uh -huh. another force we need. What's that called, Watson? It's not lift. It begins with a T. Oh. 
Well, it needs to go somewhere, so I guess it needs a little thrust. You know it. It needs a little thrust. You give it a, the Frisbee a flick. Uh -huh. On an airplane, you need an engine, and if you're flying this one, you give it a push. That's the thrust. And the reason why a Frisbee finally comes back down is because something's pulling it. What's pulling it, Watson? Gravity. Gravity is pulling it. Yeah. And as it goes through the air, what's opposing it? What's dragging along? It's got to go through oh, the... Oh, it's got a lot of friction in the air. You betcha. So those four forces, if you understand those and you know the parts, boy, you can pilot a plane. Yeah. Of course, don't go up and try to do that until you get a license when you get a little older. Uh -huh. Follow Zeke's advice. All right, before we go out and we test these planes, this plane and this Frisbee, we want to set up here an, a wind tunnel. Now, this is a specialized one. If you don't have something like we do, get a fan. Make sure it's protected and stay far away. Take your model, put two strings on like I've done here. Yep. Hold it in front of the fan, and you'll be able to see it pitch and yaw and turn. And the better the design of the plane, the steadier the course, steady as she goes. And you can do the same thing with these paper airplanes, like these students at Kettering made for us. Mm -hmm. Super craft. Let's go have a look at this specialized wind tunnel. You ready, Watson? Let's go. All right, we've got our model airplane mounted inside here. It's got a propeller on. And if you're wondering what this contraption is, it's just a wooden box. We've mounted the plane on two alligator clips here, and it's connected to an industrial vacuum cleaner. Uh -huh. So this is a fancier model of a wind tunnel than you might put together at home, but all you need is a fan that's well protected, some string in your model airplane, and you can do what we're going to do. All right, let's give it a, a whirl here. Let's turn on the, the air and see what happens to this plane inside the wind tunnel. Are you ready, Watson? Yeah, sure let's am. Let's have a quick look. Let's give it a whirl. Wow, look at that. It's trying to take off, Mr. Z. Gee, you think I might be able to ride that around the parking lot, Mr. Z? All right, Watson wants to jump on. He's really anxious to yeah. try some skydiving. Yep, yep, you yep. notice the air flowing over the top of the wings there? Remember that word we gave you, airfoil, the particular shape? And, of course, we talked about the other forces. Something else you might want to remember about planes is it's easier for planes to take off in cool weather than it is in warm weather because warm air rises and the planes need more density, if you will, to take off. That's why summer is a tough time for planes to take off. So when you go on your vacation, keep that in mind. I Better will. to take off in the morning or the evening than the middle of the day. Uh -huh. Now, I'm going to go outside and test my wooden airplane oh, oh, and that yeah. Frisbee. Yeah, Watson, gonna, where are you headed? I'm going to go get back on the plane and do a little skydiving. All right, yeah. boy, the bug has got him. We'll uh -huh. see you outside. Okay, amateur pilots, it's a moment of truth. Captain Watson back there in the studio just tested this model airplane in the Frisbee and showed us that they're airworthy. He went down the checklist like Zeke did down at Andrews, went over the parts of the plane, and compared a Frisbee, which I know a lot of you have at home, to an airplane wing. It's the reason both of them can take off, even though it doesn't seem like they can. Are you ready for takeoff? You know all about the forces we're overcoming, lift and thrust and drag and gravity. All right, you've got your pilot's wing, says Mr. Z and Watson. We're going to end our program today by taking off. Are you with us? Buckle your seat belts, grab hold of that throttle. We're going up into the skies. Let's see if they're friendly. Thanks for coming along. Next time, I need a parachute.
Ah. 